Hello and welcome everyone to episode 51 of Digitales. My name is Fezan Sayyad and I'm the founder and CEO of East River. Today we have a guest who needs no introduction. She is a famous actress, she is a philanthropist and she's the founder of The Art House. The Art House is this very cool project she has started which is basically focused on providing children the kind of education our schools don't provide. Sarvat Gilani is our guest for today and if you want to check out a tour of the art house click on the link below but if you want to continue watching this podcast continue on this stream and you will see my chat with Sarvat and the conversation I had regarding the art house and her experiences in life so stay tuned what a nice yeah. tour that I loved it oh, and you know I came by so the other day and I what I loved <laughs> about this space is that I didn't yeah. want to leave, to leave this space it felt so inviting it felt so relaxing yeah and i think it's important like so a lot of the things that, the reason i'm passionate about this stuff is because a lot of the things you mentioned are, are things that i myself have like gotten you know my daughters involved in my my wife and i um you know with the coding part we're very serious that kids need to learn coding going forward i taught them baking so literally every saturday my the girls and now my son who's 2 years old they're in the kitchen mm-hmm. and they're baking up a storm uh, it means it's very difficult keeping the, the pounds off, but it happens. Um, you know, reading, right. whether it's through audiobooks or even traditional reading, you know, all of these things are very important. But the biggest challenge is that a lot of this training is not part of the standard education curriculum. What you're doing steps yeah. outside of the education curriculum. How do you think that needs to be incorporated in or is this or should this be a standalone experience for students of all backgrounds? Not at all, Fezan. I think this can be very easily incorporated. And in fact, it should be incorporated in the educational system because at the end of the day, you're sending your child to learn something new. And learning just doesn't have to be through books. A lot of learning all around the world, you see like uh, Switzerland, Australian schooling systems, they are all hands-on practical education. They tell you how to fix a plumbing problem. They tell you, they teach you how to go to a bank and open an account. Uh, They tell you, uh, you know, if uh, you have to build a house, how do you start uh, on a basic level? So I think uh, learning cannot just be derived to, um, uh, derived by uh, exams and tests and how many marks you're getting. That doesn't make you, Uh, and entirely equipped uh, with different tools. I think these are the tools that schools also need to um, use. And I think uh, Bayview Academy is one school because uh, my kids go there. And um, recently they've started after school activities and uh, that uh, that include uh, yoga and uh, Mandarin, so jump Chinese, a little bit of theater. So schools are changing. And I feel that um, it's it's very important to continuously uh, uh, keep doing this. It doesn't have to be, if your school is not offering such a thing, you can do it at home. There is no limit. There's, you know, like I was during COVID times when everything was shut down. I remember four months down, uh, our my kids and I, used to use, uh, you know, reuse or recycle material from home and create stuff. So you can't say that um, I can't afford uh, something. And that's why I'll never be able to give this sort of uh, understanding or uh, tools to my children. I mean, I picked up a jharu ka tinka and some thread and made uh, spider webs out of it. Mm. Uh, We used uh, recycled... uh, 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 you know, milk cartons to make robots and then talk about what robots do and how they can help us and not help us sometimes. So it's 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 the passion of the mother and the father that takes the creativity everywhere. I feel uh, schools are obviously broadening their spectrum when it comes to learning. They are also adapting uh, STEM and STEAM, uh, you know, sort of projects and they're uh, looking how they can make uh, academics and academia more uh, creative Mm -hmm. uh, through through play and through uh, you know uh, using different creative uh, things Um, I feel that uh, art house uh, and places like art house also encourage parents who are 
unable to uh, sort of afford that in the school uh, timings and in the school areas because of the fee uh, uh, curriculum or uh, their timings, their working parents. So, uh, I mean, I'd like to name a few places like um, uh, Magnify Science. It's amazing mm -hmm. that place you take your kid there and there is this explosion of what science and physics is yes. and they do it through such amazing play and mm -hmm. uh, I think that's an amazing space or as an example uh, that you can you can take your child to a creative place and you can have them learn something it's not just play so a lot of parents think which is not true uh, these places research a lot buzzing bees is another place where uh, there's a lot of dialogue between parents and kids and psychologists and uh, child therapists and a lot of times uh, you know as a young mother as a first time mother uh, you don't know what to do with your child uh, there's th there's no book that is guiding you how to take care of your child in pakistan and how to give him the tools to explore and uh, get him to be a better individual a better citizen a better student a better uh, you know uh, person so these are the places that help you uh, to to take your child from not only academics and also uh, but also uh, to a creative place and I think that eventually does help uh, you to focus more like uh, so piano and guitar is something that you if you teach your child your child will know how to work with both hands and it will be sent uh, you they'll be using both their uh, both parts of their brain at the same time which you generally don't get to see in academia um, also eye hand coordination uh, a lot of children uh, write very uh, late because their eye-hand coordination is not mm -hmm. very good. Uh, so music, art, and uh, being part of creative processes helps all of that. And it helps you focus. It helps you understand. It helps you solve problems. It helps you understand that this is a problem. This is So this, this is a task we have to complete and we have to reach a goal. So I think art is one of the most amazing things that you can give to your child. And um, it's just not done on paper anymore. Uh, it's virtual. It's practical. It's 4D. Because there's various 3D. forms of art also, right? I mean, there's art is just no longer just a sketching on a piece of paper. It's, yeah. I mean, there's a whole gamut of that. But there's one part of this that... You know, you pointed out the other day, which actually really struck me, which was, you know, in, in your classroom environments, there are kids from all socioeconomic backgrounds sitting together. And there's kids coming from less privileged backgrounds. There are kids who, you know, are coming from much better privileged backgrounds. And then there were children that I saw that had special needs and they were all in one space. Tell me about how that impacts the learning and development of children of this age. Because if you look at the school, typical school environment your kids go to Bayview for example the kids in one class are typically the same kids with a similar socioeconomic background most of them don't have special needs because that's just easier for a schooling system to manage you on the other hand are creating a much different space so how does that impact the child and what have you seen you know Fazan um, uh, being uh, with Special Olympics since about seven years now I realized how powerful uh, inclusion is and what it can do to both the set of children so children who are uh, you know differently abled and mainstream kids uh, a lot of times you know these are not dining table conversations that we have uh, at home uh, a lot of times like 80 percent of the times uh, a family who's a mainstream family their kids don't even know what a special needs person is because it's never been discussed so obviously it's not the child's fault that he does not know how to behave around a special needs mm -hmm. kid especially when they go out like to birthdays or to the park or to a play area mm -hmm. and i feel that um it's it's both ways it's not that we need to teach the special needs kids how to interact and behave themselves in a mainstream uh, in a mainstream uh, space but it's also the mainstream kids that need to 
be aware of how to deal with special needs kids and only parents and teachers and you know the education system can bring that uh, change about i felt like uh, if my child can learn it if my child can understand something if my child knows who's picasso then any child can know who's picasso and mm -hmm. uh, they will be able to understand it and they will be able to explore in that field and i mean what's what's more what's more important than having every child from different uh, uh, sex of the society sit together and create yeah. art in fact it it made my children more aware it made my children understand where the other kids are coming from what are um their uh, you know sort of shortcomings or what are they great at which my kids are not good at so they always it always helps so a child coming from malir a child coming from kurangi sitting together with children from defense and clifton it helps them both understand each blessing and each mm -hmm. uh, shortcoming that they have and understand how they can overcome it together so a special needs child may think uh, you know regular people may think that a special needs child is going to be screaming is going to mm -hmm. be throwing things around but that's not how it is if you train them if you understand them if you uh, are wholesome towards their uh, personality they will sit and make wonders with mainstream kids so i have kids coming from kiran foundation uh, from special olympics from uh, sinosa from the circle uh, mm -hmm. from um, zindagi trust and they come together and they build the most amazing art uh i have not seen that kind of art even in university level because we are so inhibited like they are so inhibited uh we are around rules and what to do and what not to do they work from a very naive perspective and that naive perspective is very refreshing for the mainstream kids because they are conditioned in a certain way they their minds work in a certain way and the other kids so like i remember i was uh, doing a talk at mad school and these kids uh, were there from liari and so i asked each one of them what they want to be become and so mm -hmm. i thought that they'll be like a doctor an engineer a teacher mm -hmm. and what not hazan i was shocked they wanted to be one wanted to be an astronaut one wanted wow. to be a civil uh, servant or one wanted to be Uh, a chemical engineer one wanted to be an artist and so much more so it's really the limitations are in our heads in our mm -hmm. own heads what they can and cannot do once you put them together once you put them in a room you see the kind of um you you see the kind of backgrounds they bring in uh, in that one room you see the kind of upbringing they bring in in that one room you see the kind of creativity that they bring in on that one table and that's just magic and it's the most uh, it's the most fun class actually because there's all sorts of energy in that one class right. and, and that's uh, amazing I because you you're bringing all these uh, all these segments together and you're creating this this really unique experience for these kids but you know one of the challenges i'm assuming that you face is you know if you're bringing kids from less privileged backgrounds i mean obviously there's an affordability problem uh you know and how do you convince the parents which you know is a whole different ball game as well how do you work around fundraising for something like this because you know you need to get more of those children here to experience things like these because their schooling system is probably not providing this and this is the only place they get for that kind of freedom of expression so how how do you go about fundraising so fazan we have a qarz e hasna program um which is very very close to my heart and uh our special needs kids our underprivileged kids our um uh, autistic kids they all are in that akarzi hasna program and all the facilities that art house provides uh, is all free for them um i understand that you know so i'll i'll give you a percentage so i have 20% of mainstream kids and 70% 80% of uh you know the qarz e hasna program kids oh wow it's that bigger split huh it's uh, it's that bigger split uh because there's less opportunity so i have collaborated with 
you know, uh, people like Sabrina, uh, Sabina Khatri, uh, right. uh, which is Ad Roy, uh, to send their kids and whoever I can grab a hold of. I see a new organization. I, I go and get in touch with them. I say, you know, send your kids over because I think it's that that's what's helping me run the show really yeah it's the other way around it's it's, it's the kind of barkat that i get from those yeah. duas and you know yeah. that love that uh, is is keeping art house alive and then obviously we have our uh, very very um, you know big hearted donors um, we have some people my friends who help me adopt a child so they adopt a child uh, for a month uh, annually or or, or uh, you know six months or, or or an entire year so quarterly mm-hmm. or annually and uh, we try and make do with whatever we can um, but yes we are we are trying to uh, reach out to world bank us aid and uh, the government to to sort of help us in whatever way they can uh, but obviously that's a whole process but till then i think um, we just uh, we have our website we have our donation form uh, a button over there that says donate now so <laughs> okay. hopefully people use that more often uh, but yes i think uh, uh, organizations like art house uh, do need help because um, you know there's also a thing where uh, the governments have become very strict uh, with the ngo business because a lot of people have uh, sort of taken the money and you know they yes. fled but um, so that that puts us and us our kind of organizations uh, in a rough spot uh, but then you know one it's just assumed and uh, you know one has to work hard and one has to be at it and uh, you know if you're passionate about something like this which i am it started 3 years ago and i'm still here and uh, i am not stopping so i think uh, allah bas raste nikal deta hai kisi na kisi tarah faizan but uh, we're hoping that uh, uh, once we spread the word more we'll get more donors who can adopt our children for the karzi hasna program so hopefully we'll be able to get you some donations people watching this can check out your website i'll add the yes. i'll add the link at the end of this as well and and donate and you know it was funny like when i came by the other day and i was looking at the art on the walls uh you know i've been reading a lot about nfts and you know i've been talking to a lot of people and one of these ideas popped into my head is you know you can create these kids have created some wonderful art and they've expressed themselves in a very unique manner you can actually convert this art into digital art sell that digital art online and the person who's buying that art gets a piece of digital ownership of a one of one and the money that they pay ends up with you and you end up funding a kid's education now you know whoever's buying that little piece of digital art that's created by the kids has a sense of ownership and a sense of buy in into that child's progression and then they can keep buying that kids art or art from the thing or the school but i think there's there's something there no one's really explored the nft space in pakistan in that sense but from an ngo from a community service perspective i think mm. there's something that you know could be done potentially uh, you know we'll have to figure out yeah. what audience to target yeah fazan i uh, yes you're absolutely right um, and i remember having this conversation with you outside of art house also uh, we met at some place and i was so fascinated by the idea that somebody like you who's uh, into health and uh, you know marketing and digital marketing uh, is interested in helping kids like these so when we did have i had a meeting with somebody from binance and um, i thought it would be so so wonderful to create a space a virtual space for kids where uh, my underprivileged kids my special needs kids um, uh, my kids autistic kids could create art and make money and not just make money for their current livelihood but in fact save for college save for university so yes i think that's a big space where not a lot of people have explored and that gives you and i a room uh, <laughs> to totally jump into this and uh, make a first in pakistan and i think uh, the w- whole world is doing it so why not i think pakistan and um, it's amazing youth totally deserves people like yeah. you to work on something like this fingers so, crossed yeah. hopefully we can do it but the biggest challenge i see is that you've already got such a full plate i mean you've got your acting career you've got two kids and that two boys uh, boys <laughs> end up taking a lot of time and you've got the space 
how do you make yeah. time to manage juggle all of these responsibilities uh, and be really effective at everything that you're doing you know what's the secret <laughs> uh fazan i really don't know a lot of mothers ask me this question also and they're hating on me they're like you're <laughs> there at school you're dropping your child you're yeah. picking him up uh you know how how do you do it i feel fazan uh, it's been 7 years that i've been doing uh philanthropy work and that gives me a lot of barkat in my time uh you know i don't know how it happens i think i i i'm so motivated to be to give the best to my children so i'm there i'm so motivated to uh give best my best and whatever i can collect for children who are not even mine but obviously as a community uh, a member of the community i want to give back i feel my fame uh the millions of eyes and ears i have around me who are looking and watching me and hearing me need to hear uh stuff so i'm very responsible for all those eyes and ears to be dedicated to good causes and um uh, unbelievable causes are here like special olympics pakistan is here since 35 years Mm-hmm. and i i felt as an ambassador i needed to bring the word out not a lot of people know about it only some donors and a certain class knew about the sop ball or or stuff like that so i feel jitni bhi baat kare wo kam hai and uh, i work with indus hospital so i am their ambassador for three child related uh, departments one is a club food or hearing impaired and prosthetics and i feel whenever i go there and i do art with the kids itni duaein mujhe milti hain uh and it's all, all 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 of these blessings you know around me i sometimes go to a tarot card reader and he's like you have people <laughs> looking after you yeah. <laughs> who are these people and i'm like That's i amazing. don't know man i don't know so i think uh, fazan uh, ye to wo uh, kehte na ungli card ke shahidon mein naam likhane wali baat hai duniya mein pata nahi kya kya kar rahe hain you know uh, so if we are able to do only 1% of yeah. give 1% of our time and make that change uh, bring that change in in people's lives make their few it's totally worth it um i seriously think that it's just the time that i give to these causes that makes time for me uh, art house is my baby uh, i've been working on this since 3 4 years now and it's just happening i'm meeting such amazing people along the way like yourself right. and other people who understand the cause and they say you're walking the talk so right. they want to be part of it and they they help me in the process and they help me achieve whatever my targets and goals are so i think it's a, it's it's a all a very collaborative thing you can't do it alone i have a lot of help i have help at home i have help here and i have people in the community who are helping me so i think once we all come together we can create such amazing work whether that's uh, on a personal journey or uh, you know want to be part of other people's journey and make that better so it's it's a team work fazan i don't do this alone i can't take the credit alone no that's mm-hmm. amazing i mean i i you know just a few weeks ago i read this line that if you want to run fast you run alone if you want to run far you run together and i think this concept of having a community having people with you if you have this really really uh a uh, interesting journey of where you want to impact lives or i call it the sphere of influence you know if as long as you those people who you interact with directly every single day uh whether it's five people or 50 people if you're running a company or 500 people maybe you're running a very big company yeah if you can impact those people in a positive way and their lives improve once they come into contact with you i think you've done your part you know because that's the Absolutely. only way it works and i love the concept of you know because you give back your time has much more efficiency because you give back and i think that's such a great concept that a lot of us uh, forget that by giving we actually receive in turn and in Absolutely. your case you're actually receiving in time tenfolds. in yeah. tenfolds in tenfolds i cannot tell you how it is and i feel that you know one needs to never stop and be like i've reached my goal a top of a mountain is is the bottom of another you know the yeah. fastest place the fastest way to reach somewhere is slowly so yeah. uh, you know i have my own race i'm not in a rat race with anybody else i feel everybody is doing such fantastic job and at the same time i want to 
also create well this is a first and i haven't shared this with anyone let let mm-hmm. me share it with you Amazing. i want to make an app i want to make an app and it's it's going to be called special pakistan you know there is no directory for special needs parents and kids so i want to make an app and call and and have a uh, education where you can send your kid in inclusive schools health wise where you can take your child for therapy or for physical uh, therapy uh, marriage is a big big problem when it comes to special needs uh, kids and adults uh, there's no uh, there's no auntie rishte wali auntie uh, mm. you know checking uh, special needs uh, rishtas mm-hmm. jobs uh, there are we barely know where to go for a job uh, right. when we have a special needs child so true, true so, yeah you know so i feel that jitna bhi kare kaam hai i found out ke thode kuch lakh rupaye lagte hai maine kaha you know once i have some saved i will make that app and call it special pakistan because a first time mother and i've interviewed a lot of parents from special olympics in sinosa and i know that the kind of um, the kind of response that they get in the community just because they have a special needs child it starts from home you know that that response that uh, you know a uh, negative response starts from home it's the in-laws it's the family mm-hmm. then they go to school they are sh- they are shunned by the school hundred schools they go to they are allowed or welcomed in one uh, they have to go to 10000 doctors to understand that this doctor is the only doctor who will help your child so why should the parents go through that painful journey just because they have a special needs child they can go directly to these people who are able to help them and why haven't we thought about that because there are unbelievable people working individually for this cause but we're we're unaware of our 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 you collective know each others uh, each others efforts a collective yeah. efforts so there needs to be a spectrum a place or a platform where we get all of this information all for free you know? well we'll well here's the offer we'll make it for you i mean we've got a team that does hey. actually digital work all you need to do is give us the data and we'll put the app together for you oh. and that'll be our way of giving to your cause oh. because i think <laughs> it's a fantastic cause i think it's amazing what you guys are doing um and we'd no be happy way. to assist yeah yeah yeah, yeah totally so so that that's done it, yeah Hundred percent, hundred percent. Okay. I I want to change okay. gears and I want to ask you one question because yeah. you you so you're doing so much on this front, right? But recently you've done this really interesting piece of content called Churels, which was completely out of the box, completely different. Uh, it did yeah. not run. It could not run on our local broadcast networks because of the kind of content it was. So I have a two part question. Number 1, do we see you in more such content and are Pakistani audiences ready for this? I mean, wasn't there like some sort of a reaction, oh, you know, how can you because they're used to seeing you a certain way on TV in your traditional roles. Here you're doing something engaged in a completely different role in a different piece of content targeting a completely different audience. Is our market yeah. ready for this? Uh, you know, Fazan, when we were making Chirez, I mean, I got really lucky with the team, uh, Asim uh, Abbasi and his entire team, wonderful people, and uh, you know, uh, that doesn't happen so often. Twenty years of my career, I've played the Muslim to succeed the Orat, and uh, then eventually I come with this, uh, you know, uh, with yeah. vengeance, uh, and and uh, I mean, an actor is an actor because he tends to put himself. Else in different shoes, and that's mm-hmm. the best part about being an actor. Uh, but at the same time, um, I felt like when we were making Churez, we thought we'll have to really go underground, and we had we have to uh, live in these uh, burrows, really, because we'll be uh, attacked, and uh, uh, people will not like what we did. But you know, to our surprise, we had eighty percent of love and twenty percent of criticism, and we would take it. Take that any day. That's amazing. Um, so that made us realize, and this was the Pakistani audience, um, and this was the time where Z5 was available to download mm-hmm. here in Pakistan. So a lot of people watched it. There was a huge buzz. People thought it was binge-worthy, uh, you know, mm-hmm. content, and they literally saw it over the weekend. Um, and when we had, when we got that feedback we've got the love on social media and uh, you know uh, electronic media 
uh, through through social media, obviously, and through interviews, we realize that people are very much ready for this. People are sick and tired of Saaz Bahu drama. But the only problem is there is only Saaz Bahu drama. Uh, you know, that's their only choice. So it, un until unless you don't give people a choice, how will you find out that, you know, they are starving for uh, mm -hmm. newer, fresher, um, different kind of content? So we were able to tag that and we realized that, yeah, not just Pakistan, but the entire world is going through this and they want to see different content. We're tired of the same, you know, 26 episodes premise is whether the girl is, you know, good enough to get married to a boy. Right, right, exactly. Right? And whether she's good enough to be accepted by the in-laws. While, the, while, while life in Pakistan has also moved People, women are more career oriented. Uh, women are more focused. Women have goals. Women want to achieve those goals. Women's goal is not just to get married, and that's not the end of the end end goal. It's much more now. And I feel that a lot of dramas are also being made like that now. Um, they are picking up uh, more career oriented issues. Uh, they're picking up taboo issues and talking about it. But obviously, that is like two percent. And the rest of the 98% is the same. Um, so to answer your question, I hope we're seeing more. I more. get the sense uh, we're seeing a whole lot more <laughs> of this kind of content and you yeah. not playing the Muslim. Yeah, yeah. I'm not the Muslim. <laughs> I'm the Zalim now. You're the... <laughs> you know, so I'm the bully. Uh, the but you'll bully. see, um, uh, Katil Hasinao Kinam is another uh, yeah. very uh, noir kind of uh, noirist. Uh, thing that we did with Z5 and uh, that was an unbelievable very uh, women centric uh, uh, content and so it's just unfortunate that our own productions these are all Pakistani productions but they're not being seen in Pakistan and that's, that's the only sad bit that is so sad because we're being appreciated globally and here we are not even appreciating our own content, our own people. Um, speaking of which, Joyland was taken to Khan. It was selected and it was awarded as best jury prize, jury's choice. Now, a wow. film and like yes, that, you were at Khan is, recently in, in, I think, a couple of months ago for exactly this. Yeah. yeah. So uh, a story about a, a small family from uh, Lahore, uh, from Gawal Mandi. Mm -hmm. You know, how different could that story be? It is the truth. It is about us. It is what we go through in the society. But um, hopefully we're waiting for it to come down in November and be in our cinemas. So I feel our stories are wonderful, uh, Fazan. Uh, we just need to believe in ourselves and each other and not pull each other down. Because at the end of the day, I think we're a very subjective nation. We only think about ourselves. Barely and rarely we see people in Pakistan who are thinking for a collective cause, for a collective change, a collective mindset that needs to be embraced by everyone. And I feel that uh, slow and steady, we're trying. And as long as we're trying uh, every day, we'll get there. We'll get there somehow. You just said, Chirels right, the too. fastest. Too. <laughs> <laughs> you just said, right, the fastest way yeah. to the top is actually the slowest way. Uh, the fastest way to reach somewhere is slowly. Is slowly, okay. The top okay. of a mountain is the bottom of another. The top of yeah. the mountain, okay. Got it. Those are my yeah. two. I'm going, I have a wall right here. <laughs> of, I call it golden nuggets. And I'm down to oh. like 15. And okay. my number two was uh -huh. to go fast and far. Sometimes mm -hmm. you first need to slow down. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yes. A lot of times, you know, people ask me that, uh, uh, why, why aren't you, you know, pushing yourself in the mainstream stuff? Why, why don't we see you on drama, in dramas? And why aren't you there? And I'm like, man, it's not my race. I'm the kachua. I remember I'm the kachua. I'm the hair. <laughs> I'm not the hair. I'm the tortoise. So I'm really happy being the tortoise, Fezan. And, and I feel that's the way forward. Yeah. If you rush into it, if you are, um, if you want to just, you know, bring people behind you and just go through it that's not the way you have to bring people together and that's the kind of change you will get only uh, the kind of change you will get is 
when you take people together and when you don't want to run away from them and ahead of them. No, and I think, look, very few people talk about you these know. things. And I think it's important because, you know, I've always had the same concept in my mind that, you know, the last day that I spend here uh, in this in this life is the day I want to be at my peak. So that means along that entire journey, whatever that day is, it's an uphill battle, right? What happens when you achieve success Absolutely. in your 30s or your 20s or your 40s? And then you kind of like peak and then you start declining. I mean, that's not a yeah. life that's interesting. You're better off taking it slow and steady. And then by that end moment, you've reached the top and everything you look back at has been this amazing journey versus reaching Absolutely. the top and then spending the rest of your life at the bottom wondering what happened. <laughs> exactly. You know? Exactly. So, I, I, I truly believe that. So thank you, Sarva. This was amazing. I love the chat. We are here to support mm. your cause. I'm a big fan of this initiative. I think our education system does, frankly, need an overhaul. And I think that what you're doing is, you know, a, a drop in the bucket that will become a bucket or maybe an ocean in its own. And we are absolutely here to support you. And mm -hmm. we are looking forward to Cherelle's too. You need to give us a date <laughs> or when it'll be so that we can binge watch that that weekend. Inshallah. I will let uh, Asif know and I will forward your <laughs> request to him. He's uh, he's very secretive about these things. And uh, but no, actually, we had him on, by the way. You know, I had him on uh, right did? after. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Amazing. Right after Cherelle's was on. I actually right. had Asim on. I even had uh, Yastra on to talk about. Yastra Rizzi yeah, is yeah. spectacular. Yeah, man. yeah, yeah. And, um, Great Nimra guys, and what a what, person. and Nimra was interesting too in that project. But I love yeah. Asim's story about how he went from being a banker into this project and the entire yes. experience he had. Uh, yes, you know, isn't that phenomenal? Fascinating, fascinating. And it took him a while to get here, but he was at yeah. it. Like, like we were just talking about it. That yeah, slow, slow and, and steady, steady you know, and he got there. Yeah, slow and steady, he got there. So hopefully next year it turns too. Uh, yes. No promises. Do not quote me. Asim is going to kill me. <laughs> it's <laughs> but, between uh, you and me yeah. and everyone else who's More watching. So, <laughs> I, absolutely, it's you know no pressure. <laughs> All right. Great. Thank you, Sarva. Thank you for the time. Thank you for doing what you do, Fazan, because uh, you know connecting people and just spreading the word out in itself is uh, is a big big deal, and you do it so beautifully, and you're part of amazing causes, and I see you around. Uh, supporting these causes and there, you know, that Karze Hasna is also from your thank end. You. So thank you so much. Thank you. And thank you everyone for tuning in and check out the Art House's website. We'll put the link below and do donate and support the great cause and support Sarvat's initiative. All right. Take care. See you soon. Bye-bye.